أيها الإخوة الكرام وأخوات السيدات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My brother he recited for us some ayat from the Quran Al Quran Al Karim We did not recite these ayat for ceremony as some people they do. The Qur'an is not for ceremonial purposes. We don't recite it for decoration at special occasions. But he recited some ayats as a specific medicine and a specific proof we will use that medicine to heal the disease inside the body of the Muslims. And we'll use that proof as an evidence for the proposition we want to make in regards to our subject from the root of ignorance to the fruit of Islam. Now our discussion this evening is a grassroot discussion. That means it's not very high. It's not sophisticated. It's not meant to be eloquent. It's heart to heart, mind to mind, eyeball to eyeball. From the man in the street, from the young man or the young woman who is just reaching the level of responsibility all the way up to our shuyukh, the people like myself and those who are older. Because the medicine is the medicine for all the Muslims as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins many ayats. He says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu taqullah. Who does he mean? Everyone who has responsibility, they should fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they should be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, my brother, Sheikh Shadi, he mentioned that the target of our discussion is the youth of Islam. It is. Because the youth, they represent the future. There's not much that those of us who are 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, what can we do? Our strength is gone, or it is going. Even our eyesight is gone or going. Our mental capacities, gone, going. The hair falling out. We start to holding on to dunya even more, but our hands cannot hold it. Because even that, the grip is going. But the young people, they have fresh, strong eyesight. Their nafs very powerful. Their voice is very strong. Their blood is running hot. All their ambitions in front of them. This is the nature of the young person. MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. My brother, Prince Naseem Hamid, 
he sent his salam to all of you from the UK. And inshallah, in about 30 minutes, we will hook up with him because he wants to say something to the brothers and sisters here in Sydney, Australia. The young people, they are the future of this religion. What we plant today is what will grow tomorrow. And unfortunately, 70% of the young people of Islam, they are in the streets. And that's why I spend more time in the street than I do in the masjid. Me. I'm more comfortable looking for those believers or those potential believers in the streets. Because our shuyuk, our ulama, our fuqaha, our students of knowledge, they can handle the ones in the masjid. Those that have come to the masjid, they can handle them. My job, go get those in the street and bring them to the masjid. Pick up the pieces, put them together and bring them to the masjid. And we need a cadre of mature, seasoned, balanced, committed Muslims who don't mind to get their hands dirty and their feet dirty or to dodge some bullets or to sit in the places where the brothers do the haram things and to talk with them as believers or to talk to kuffar as potential Muslims and pick up the pieces and bring them to the places where they can be doctored. Now this is a part of the deen. And this is what the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what he did in Mecca. Thirteen years, he sat with the people who were drinking, drugging, because they had drugs in those days, but different kind of drugs. Different kind. Maybe the kind you drink or the kind they eat, like what they're using in Yemen and other places, something they chew. But they had drugs then too. Something the people thought they were using to get high, but really it was taking them low. So the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although he was receiving wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he was pure, but he wasn't so pure that he isolated himself someplace and he told the people, come to him. No, he went to them. And he sat with some of the people who we would call not good people. The rough people, the tough people. And I give you one story very shortly, which is enough for us. Among the companions of the Prophet wasallam, there's two stories that we need to think about. One is the story of Abu Dhar radiallahu an. And Abu Dhar and his people, Al-Ghifari, Abu Dhar Al-Ghifari, they was the kind of people that when they came into Mecca, everybody was tying down what they had, watching, checking, looking, until they left. And no one was saying any words to them for fear that their ignorance would turn upon them because they were those kinds of people. But I remind you of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said about Abu Dhar. He said, Abu Dhar is a man that walks alone. And he's a man that will die alone. And he's a man that will be raised alone. And Abu Dhar is our example for the zuhd of this dinya, of this deen. One time a man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Oh, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
tell me what to do so that people will love me and Allah will love me. He said, Azhad fi dunya. Give up your love and your attachment for the dunya, Allah will love you. And give up your love and your attachment for what other people possess and people will love you. Abu Dhar was the companion of the Prophet ﷺ that represented this hadith. He didn't have any love for the dunya. And he used to admonish the other companions about their involvement in dunya. We mean halal dunya, not haram dunya, but har- halal dunya. He even used to admonish them about the halal. And the other example is the example of Khalid ibn Walid radiallahu an. The man who fought against the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and the companions. The man who was responsible for the wounding of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa The only man who defeated the Muslims while the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was among them. The only man, Khalid ibn Walid. But this is not what we know him as. We know him as this, as what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa give him this special title called Sayfullah. Because the same Saif that he used in dunya, in jahiliya, he used it in Islam like no one else used it then or after. A man who after the Prophet ﷺ passed away, and Abu Bakr radiallahu an passed away, and Umar ibn Khattab was the Khalifa, he asked Khalid, Khalid, I need you to go to the Persian people, all the Roman people. I'm not sure exactly the battle. How many soldiers you need? Khalid said, give me 500. Amr al-Khattab reminded him, Ya Khalid, those people, they have themselves Maybe 100,000 troops. Khalid said, okay, then give me 500 more. Umar told him to take 10,000 troops with him. Khalid did not want 10,000 troops. He said, those kuffar, Allah have only given them a piece of the dunya. But Allah gave to us the promise of Akhirah. And wallahi, if I went there with only 10 believers, we'll come back with their power, we'll come back with victory. This is how he felt. Because those companions of the Prophet ﷺ, they only cared about the dunya, and they only thought about the dunya, like the water when it hits the ground in the middle of the sky when the, in the summertime. How long it lasts? Like that. Like that. Because their hearts was not attached to dunya, and they was only thinking, considering akhirah, Allah gave them izza. Allah gave them power. And that power was felt before they even met the kuffar. And those handful of troops, compared to those number of troops which the kuffar had, was enough for Khalid. He came back with the victory, mashallah. These are our heroes. And for our young people that are in the streets, we don't like you to be in the streets. We don't like who you are with in the streets. We don't like what you are doing in the streets. We don't like what it does to the image of Islam. But we love you. We love you. You are the sons of Islam and the daughters of Islam and the future of Islam. And inshallah ta'ala, among you, there is an Abu Dhar and there is a Khalid ibn Walid. So we have to go and search in the trash for our treasure. 
But those of you who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can come up out of the trash to become the treasure of Islam. And this is what we want to talk about tonight. From the root to the fruit, the root of Jahiliyyah to the fruit of Islam, from the trash of the dunya to the treasure of the akhirah, from the darkness of the Jahiliyyah to the light of Islam. This is what we want to talk about tonight. And let me begin by emphasizing the message of the ayats which was read. The brother he first read from Ayatul Kursi. And Ibn Kathir, Allah Yarhamhu, he said, among the most powerful verses of the Quran, Ayatul Kursi is among them. And if anyone wants to prove who is Allah, where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what our relationship is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the description about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recite Ayatul Kursi. This is enough. We don't have to recite more. And after Ayatul Kursi, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala announces to us who He is, where He is, what is His power, what is His relationship, after He says all of that to us, to give us the power of presentation. So we know who this word is coming from. Then he says, La ikara hafid deen. There is no compulsion in the deen. And this has two meanings. No compulsion for anyone to accept Islam. We cannot force anybody to accept Islam. But for the Muslims, there is compulsion to hear and to obey. So we cannot read this ayah meaning that there's no compulsion in the religion. No, no compulsion to force anybody into the religion. But once you are in the religion, there is legislation. Wallahul hukmu, wallahul amr. Whoever's a Muslim, ati Allah wa ati al-Rasul wa ulu amru minkum. Obey Allah and obey His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you have no choice about that. And obey those who charge with authority as long as they obey Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لا إكراح في الدين قد تبين الرشد من الغي Because guidance, a rushd, is clear from غي, from doubt and error. This day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected the religion. He made the truth just as clear as the day. And He made falsehood as deep and dark as the night. And there's no human being, whether blind or otherwise, that doesn't know the difference between the night and the day. And truth and falsehood is known by everyone. And that's why everyone of a certain age will be responsible Imam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they will not be able to lie and say they didn't know قَدْ تَبَيَّنَ الرُّشْتُ مِنَ الْغَيْءِ فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُتْ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْوُفْقَى So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues Whomsoever makes kafar and it taghut. So whoever rejects the tawagit, the taghut, what is the taghut? The taghut is not just the idols. The taghut also is your desires. The taghut is also what you say you love, which Allah hates. The taghut is your tribe. The taghut is your group, your crew. That's your taghut also, your crew. Your group of homeboys. That's your taghut. Your family and their blood and their name. That's your taghut. Because the taghut, the tawaghut today is a different type of tawaghut. At that time there was asnam, idols. But tribalism is a form of taghut. Selfism is a form of taghut. 
Emotionalism, desires, is a form of following tagut. A person following their hawa is a form of tagut. So, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْتَاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ So whoever rejects tagut, their inner and outer idols, and makes a covenant, iman, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْأُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى So, certainly, they have made a commitment of great fortitude and stability. Like the mountains, when a man enters the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon ikhlas, he becomes like the mountain, stable, clear. He can see, he can hear, he can taste. As the Prophet sallallahu said, the mu'min is qayyasun fatan. The believer, he cannot be fooled. He cannot be led because he can see in front Qayyusul Fatan, he has inner sight. No one will fool him. Because of his iman, Allah will guide him. And this grip which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him, it will never break. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّكُوا Hold on! To the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the hablillah? Al-Quran wa sunnah. If you hold on to it, the Prophet sallallahu said, no one will lead you astray. You will have an answer for everything. Answer for yourself and for them. An answer for marriage, an answer for divorce, an answer for business, an answer for pleasure, an answer for sex, an object for birth. For anything you're looking for, there is in the Qur'an and the Sunnah a medicine and an answer for everything. لَمْ فِصَامَ لَهَا وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ And Allah, He is the hearer. And He is also the knower. سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ He's the hearer and the knower. Then it begins, it goes on. Allah وَلِيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah is the wali. Of those who believe. What is wali? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the friend of the one who loves him. He is the protector of those who love him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect and he will love and he will guide the one who loves him. And in the time of the Prophet wasallam, some people they used to say to the Prophet wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah. They used to say, I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel alayhi salam came to the Prophet wasallam with wahi to answer what they said. And what was it? What he told the Prophet? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell the Prophet wasallam to tell those people who said they love him? In kuntum tuhibbun Allah, فَاعْتَبِئُونِي يَحْبِبُكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ If you really love Allah, then follow me. So Allah made condition. He made it conditional that whoever really loves Allah, they should follow the Prophet ﷺ. And then if they follow the Prophet ﷺ, then Allah will love them and forgive them their sins. So, you find Muslims today in the street, drinking alcohol, taking drugs, shooting people, robbing people, not making any salah, hating Muslims, killing Muslims, planning, conspiring against Muslims, and acting like gangsters and dogs and criminals. Muslims! But if you ask them, are they Muslim? They say, yes. Do you love Allah? Yes. SubhanAllah. How you can love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but you don't obey Him? How you can love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you don't pray towards Him? How you can love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hate a believer? Any believer? 
It is because you and I, at one time or another, have been blinded by jahiliya. Even the man I spoke about, Abu Dhar, what did he say to Bilal? What did he say to our beloved Sayyid, Sayyid, Sayyidina Bilal? One day he called him, O oh, son of a black woman. They were talking and Bilal was Habashi. And the, the Habashi people among the Arabs at that time had a low position. So in, a, in some uh, jahiliya attitude, he said, Oh, you son of a... When the Prophet ﷺ said, Oh, Abu Dhar, today you said the foulest thing from jahiliya. And because of this admonition from the Prophet ﷺ, he felt so bad. He felt as if he was like, like a piece of dirt on the ground. He went to Sayyidina Bilal and he apologized. And he put his foot, his face on the ground. And he told Bilal, oh, you put your foot on my head. To correct himself. How many of us are willing to correct ourselves? Because this is the issue. The Prophet wasallam said, let him who believes in Allah in the last day either say what's good or keep quiet. Let him who believes in Allah in the last day be generous to his guest. Let him who believes in Allah in the last day be kind and generous towards his neighbor. In the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he also said, Ittakullah haythu ma kuntum watbi'a sayya'a bil hasana tamhuha wa khalika nas bi khuluqin hasanin. Subhanallah. Look what the Prophet ﷺ said to you and me. What did he say? He said, Let him who believes in Allah in the last day, either say what's good or keep quiet. Be silent. Let him who believes in Allah in the last day, be generous to their guests. Let him who believes in Allah in the last day, be generous, noble, gentle to their neighbors. And then he said, Fear Allah, be mindful of Allah wherever you are. Don't just be mindful of Allah in the masjid. Don't just be mindful of Allah in front of your father, in front of the sheikh. No, be mindful, fear Allah in secret and in the open. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the street, the masjid, the school, the shop. Be honest, be decent, be dignified, be Muslim. Fear Allah wherever you are. Going to bed, waking up with your wife, with your husband, with your children, with your parents, with your fellow Muslim, with your neighbor who's kafir. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what we should say to each other. Ya Abdullah, ittaqullah habibi. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whoever believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when they hear the word, ittaqullah, they straighten him up. If it don't straighten you up, it means you're dead. You're dead. Your heart is dead. Maybe you cannot be straightened up, you got to be beat up. <laughs> because in the Jadeen, there's two ways to straighten a man up. With the fear of Allah or the fear of his creatures. This is why Umar ibn Khattab, عن, he used to walk in the streets of Medina with a whip over his shoulder. So those who didn't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they fear him. <laughs> Subhanallah. And this is why Umar ibn Khattab, he was the first one to set up the police force among the Muslims. Because he realized that after the Prophet wasallam, the iman of the believers start to drop. Even the women, he used to give the khutbah, and the women, he used to pick up stones and throw it at them. <laughs> Chase them from the masjid. And they complained to our mother, Aisha radiallahu anha. They complained. Why is Umar, he chasing us from the masjid, throwing stones at us? Not big stones, pebbles. We used to come to the masjid in the time of the Prophet Why is he chasing us? 
But she told him, yes, you did. But you are not uh, gossiping. You are not wearing all these flashy colors. You are not wearing lipstick and paint on your faces. And you are not acting so bold like this. So Umar is right and you are wrong. Subhanallah. So the iman of the believers start to drop. And so Umar radiallahu an, he realized that the people were not being regulated so much by the Qur'an. So he know he have to build a force of Muslims to regulate the other Muslims. Because when you find a group of Muslims where there is no regulation, what are they? They're lawless. And this is one of our problems as Muslims. After the head was cut off in 1929, 1924, after the head was cut off, now the Muslims, they got no regulation. Everybody do what he feel like doing. If the imam tell him, you come here and sit down, you and your wife, I make a hukum on you. For you and your wife, he tell you, shut up, don't tell me what to do in my house. This is how the Muslims are today. If the imam goes into the store down the street, and the Muslim is selling haram, the imam says, what you doing, brothers? Subhanallah. This is khanzir you're selling. This is alcohol you're selling. This is maysir, gambling that you're doing. You're facilitating fawahish. What you're doing, brothers? Why are you standing on the corner selling drugs? What are you doing? They tell him, if you don't get out of here, we'll shoot you too. <laughs> this, this is the kind of Muslims we're dealing with. But if there was very strong Muslims with that Imam, Muslims standing as Sunnah, strong men, tough, not afraid, and when the imam lifts his hands, he's lifting the hands of maybe a thousand men like that. And when he brings his hands down, he brings his hands down with a thousand men like that. Then how would that man talk to the imam? This is the kind of imam we want. And this is the kind of Muslims we need. Those who don't fear Allah, who don't fear Allah they will fear the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But oh Muslims, we don't have this kind of imam yet. But it will come insha'Allah. But you and I, we still have the chance to istajibu lillah. Respond to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, when you hear Him speak. You have the chance to be obedient. You have the chance to respond. You have the chance to be the soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the soldiers of shaitan. What do you want to be? How many want to be the soldiers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And how many he want to be the soldiers of shaitan? None. None. Say alhamdulillah Muslims. <laughs> but you have to make effort because shaitan, the shayateen, they have an army. They have their army and they are very well organized. And they are everywhere. They are in your houses. They are in your shops. They are in the street when you enter the streets. They are in the souk. They are in the schools. They are in the buildings. Some of them wearing suits, ties, calling themselves bankers, professionals. All kinds of shayateen is there. Some of them wearing dresses and skirts. Shayateen. And some of them we have been programmed to love and to follow. O oh, Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allahu waliyu ladina amanu yukhrijuhum min al-dhulumati ila nur He brings them out of the darkness of jahiliyyah into the light of Islam. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى nur. He brings them out of the darkness, the corruption, the foulness of the jahiliyyah into the beauty, the fragrance, and the radiance, and the light of Islam. Last question. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءُهُمُ الطَّاغُوتِ يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُّورِ إِلَى الظُّلُمَاتِ 
أولئك أصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون سبحان الله So Allah is telling us that the armies of shaitan, what are they doing? As for the people who is following the kuffar, and as for the kuffar themselves, because here it says, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا He is speaking of the kuffar, but it also means those who follow them. Because those who follow the kuffar, they are among the kuffar. We don't call a Muslim a kafir ever. We don't care if a Muslim drink, he drugs, he sins, he curse, he kill, he steal. He's not a kafir. He should be punished. He should be purified. But he is never ever a kafir. Until he makes murtad. If he makes ridda, he becomes murtad. Then we can say, on his own speech, he has become murtaddin. But we never call a Muslim a kafir even if he acts like a kafir. We say, he is involved in kufr. And therefore we see that many of the Muslims today, especially the young Muslims, they are caught up in the clutches of kufr. Because the kufr has offered them something they think they cannot find in the deen. Companionship. And some of it is our fault. Some of the older Muslims, it's our fault. We don't make the masjid attractive for them. We don't make room in the masjid for them. The masjid is only the rugs, the books. What's some young people going to do with rugs and books all day? The older men who are satisfied to sit against the walls and read Quran for two hours a day and sit in front of the television for four hours a day and sit and smoke a hookah pipe for another four hours a day and to play with their wives and their children some more times in the day and to go to work. This is what they do. The young people is not like that. Young people are active. They want to know what's going on. They want to know what's happening. What's going down? What's going up? Who got it? How can I get it? Who's with it? Who you with? They want to get with what's going on. They want to have some of whatever they can and they don't care how they get it. And we got to be realistic about this issue. The young people, they want what the old people got. They see Pops, he got a wife or two. He might not have the stability or the ability to deal with a wife, but he, gonna, he want a little girl. He want a little honey on the side. <laughs> a little haram honey. And, and we are telling him he ain't ready for marriage. And we're not going to support him in marriage. Since he didn't finish school, and since he ain't do the job we want him to do, and since he ain't doing what I told him to do, don't get married. So what you telling him to do? You laying down with your wife every night or going to visit your other wife on other nights. What you think your son doing? He grown man just like you are. You have to facilitate what the young people need. Make a room. If your son has a room in your house, let him go get him a wife and bring that wife in his room in your house. Better for him to have a, a wife and you and your wife take care of them until they get themselves on their feet than for him to go out and deal with the haram. And the same thing with the daughters. How come the, young, how come the brothers don't want to give their daughters away? He looking for Prince Charming to come. <laughs> he looking for that brother who got a good job, brother who got a good education, the brother who going to spend 10000 on the dowry, 10000 on the apartment, 10000 on on Pops too. And Pops want the 10 grand, he want the 10,000 before he even pay the dowry. So the young brother, he can't come up with that, that 30,000. So what's he going to do? He can't get married. So the young sister, what happens to her? She looking, he looking. And when moms 
and Pops is not looking, they hooking. <laughs> then you got a you got an Ibn Haram that comes. You got a little Haram baby that comes, and everybody make it a secret for a little while until it's apparent to everybody. Then they got the, then they had the Walima, a Haram Walima. Because the fact is, the baby is innocent. The baby didn't do nothing wrong. So then you got this cycle of hypocrisy. And who? Ha what happened? Because we didn't follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. He said when the, when the man gets to an age of responsibility, he should marry. Didn't he say that, wasallam? And even he performed a marriage one time when a man didn't have nothing but some ayats of the Qur'an. And another time, the man had nothing but some slippers. He said, give that to her for a dowry if she'll accept it. Of course. I'm not going to give my, my daughter to none of you guys with no slippers. <laughs> but this shows the sunnah, the practicality of the sunnah. All these young men who are 14, 15, 16 years old, if they are responsible, we got to start thinking about marriage for them. And these young girls who are 13, 14, 15, if they are responsible, put them in the house of that father or put them in the house of the other father and let them get married. You save them from zina. Dear brothers and sisters, he says, as for those who disbelieve their awliya, that is their protectors and their friends, are their ta'ud, their desires and their objects of inspiration. Those ta'ud Bring them from the light of Islam. Your sons and daughters are born in Islam. What happened to them? Be honest. Oh, my, my brothers, my uncles, my, other, my brothers and uncles, those who are my age and those who are the age of my father. What happened to your sons and daughters? Be honest. Don't keep fooling yourself. You know what happened to them. You, you were not able to control yourself, and therefore you lost control of your children. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تَقُوا اللَّهِ وَالْتَنْذُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ وَتَقُوا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ فَعَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِكُونَ this is what the ayah says. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah, be mindful of Allah, and look, look, reflect, ponder, think, plan. Think about what you send forward for yourselves on the tomorrow. What's tomorrow? The future. What's the future? Your children. What preparation did you make? So we didn't make any preparation. Don't listen to what I have to say. Allah is khabir. He knows the inner secrets. He knows what you hide. He knows what you do when you go outside. He knows what you do inside. He knows your thinking. He knows your hearts. He knows your homes. He knows what you have. Khabirun bima ta'amaloon. He knows what you do. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ And do not be like those who forgot about Allah. How did the people forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They forget His name? Did they forget the name of Allah? No, they didn't. How they forget about Allah? They forgot about the hukm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were making the salah. They were paying the zakah. They were fasting in Ramadan. They believed in Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they made Hajj and Umrah. So how did they forget about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? They forgot to implement the hukum of Allah. The rules, the commandments. Is my brother there? As a result of their forgetting about Allah, Allah caused them to forget their own selves. What's their own selves? Them and their children. Dear brothers and sisters, we will continue, but I think my brother Nasim Hamid is on the line. In another half an hour. 
خلاص كويس جزاك الله خير بارك الله فيك أخي الحمد لله ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فانساهم انفسهم when they forgot about Allah that is they forgot to implement the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rules of the deen is not the five arkan that's the, that's the, that's the ibadah the rules of the deen is the way the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ordered us how to live the halal and the haram we don't seek the halal and don't we don't stay away from the haram and as a result of that we lost our identity we lost our dignity we lost our faces we lost the ird we lost our respect even in the face of our own children and then as a result of that we became and our children became what fasiqin O Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفاعزون فاعزون not alike are the people of the fire. That means the kafirs and the criminals. Because the people of the fire is not just kuffar. This is what you Muslims need to know this. The people of the hellfire, they are not just kuffar. The people of the fire are the kuffar and also the criminals from among the Muslims. Ashab and nari they are the kuffar the munafiq, kafiri, munafiqi, and mushrikeen, and also fasiqeen. Ashab al-Nari, humul faizun. Ashab al-Jannah, humul faizun. The people of the Jannah, they are successful. Successful in this life, and successful in the hereafter. They are successful in every way, and they are successful in everything that they do. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, there are three qualities. He called them, halawatul iman. Halawatul iman, the sweetness of faith. What are those three qualities? That a man loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mimma siwahuma. That he loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than he loves anyone besides them. He loves Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than he loves his mother and father. That's why the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu they used to say, Oh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu may my parents be sacrificed for you. And that's why when Abdul Rahman, the son of Abu Bakr and Siddiq, told his father, Oh, my father, I saw you on the battlefield many times. I could have killed you. But because I, because I love you, I could not do it. And Abu Bakr said to his son, Oh my son, wallahi, I never saw you. But if I had seen you, I would have killed you for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah, you will not find those believing in Allah and the last day, loving those who disbelieve, even to be their fathers, their son, or their whole people. This is Abu Bakr and Siddiq. The difference between the believer who has wala for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love for Allah and love for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, none of you can truly believe until your love for me exceeds his father, his son, and the whole of mankind. That's the first quality. The second quality is that a person loves another person only for the sake of Allah. I don't love a person because he's an Arab. 
he's a Lebanese, he's a Saudi, he's an African, he's a Somali, he's, he's Turkey, he's Iraqi, he's Irani, he's my homeboy. We don't have this kind of relationship. That's the relationship of Jahiliya. We love a Muslim because he's Muslim. And we love him more when he is Qanitin, he's obedient. When he loves Allah, we love him more. And we love a Muslim, but if he shows his disobedience to Allah, we still love him, but we hate what he does. We never hate a Muslim. We hate what he does. We hate what she does. We oppose what they do. But we never hate or oppose a Muslim. Not the Muslim, not the Shahada. And this is an important point for us. We love a person for no reason except because of the hub of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third quality is that a person hates kufr, jahiliya, corruption, the foulness of the dunya, dalala, bid'a. The person hates all of this like they would hate being driven into a fire. Can you imagine if there was a room back there where the furnace was at and we built up the fire where the flames was going up through the roof and for something that you did we drag you from this place all the way to that back room to throw you in that fire. You'll be kicking and screaming and fighting and yelling all the way there. Because you are imagining what will happen to you when you get thrown in that fire. The believer who has halawa to the iman, when he is invited to the things of the dunya, when he's invited to the things of the facade, when he's invited to the things that of corruption, fawahish, evil, kufr, bid'a, shirk, he hates that and what he's, how he's invited to that with the imagination that he's going to be thrown into a fire. This is one of the qualities of his iman. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يكون حواه تبعا لما جئت به أو كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. None of you can become a true believer until you subordinate your hawa. What is your hawa? Your feelings, your opinions, your desires, your inclinations, your feelings, your emotions, your desires, your inclinations, your opinion. That means the believer is the person who when they hear the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they don't have any option. They don't say, walakin, or however, or I can't do that, or I, my opinion, my feeling. No, the believer is when they hear what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, they say, Sami'na wa ta'ana. We hear, we obey. We are in complete surrender. The scholars of Islam, they had a statement about Islam. They said, Al-Islamu istislamu lillahi bit-tawheed wal-inqiyadu lahu bit-ta'ati. And they added to that, وَرُدُّ الشَّرْكِ وَالْكُفْرِ وَأَهْلِهِ And they reject kufr and they reject shirk and all the branches of that family. This is the nature of Islam. You and I have to make inqiyad, surrender, complete submission. I give up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I subordinate my desires, my opinion, my appetite, my feelings. I subordinate my emotions to the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the order of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, None of you can become a true believer until they love for their brother. And here it also means their sister. What you love for yourself. Now think about that. 
if you hate a Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, it's enough, it's enough proof, it's enough proof against a Muslim that he or she has envy and hatred for their Muslim brother or sister. How can a Muslim go to sleep hating another Muslim? Because if you die while you're sleeping hating another Muslim, you think you're going to get Jannah? You think you're going to get Paradise? You think you're going to get Maghfirah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You think you're going to get mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Never, never, ever, ever. One of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he slept and in his dream, he heard the footsteps of that companion in the Jannah in front of him. This, this, this companion was, I think it was Bilal ibn Rabah. So in the morning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he asked him, Oh Bilal, what is it you're doing? What you did? And one of the things that Bilal, he said, radiallahu an, I never go to sleep having any ghilla in my heart against any Muslim. Say la ilaha illallah Muslims. I never go to sleep having any ghilla in my heart for a Muslim. So every night, you and I, we need to clean out the filth, the ghilla, the hasad, the envy, the hatred out of the hearts of any Muslim. You got a beef with a Muslim? You and that Muslim go to the imam, go to his father, come to your father, let's settle it. Some money involved? Let somebody pay the money. Some blood involved? Let somebody pay the, the, the what is it called? Qisas. There's a medicine in the deen to settle all arguments. But let me tell you this, brothers and sisters. For those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't want the blood. For the Muslims, they don't want the money. The real believers don't want the blood, they don't want the money. What do they want? What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, He says, هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ تُنْجِيكُمْ مِنْ عَذَابٍ عَلِيمٍ تُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُجَاهِدُونَ فِي سَبِلِ اللَّهِ بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ وَأَنفُسِكُمْ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And then he says, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبُكُمْ وَيَدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْدِيَ الْأَنْهَارِ وَمَسَاكِينَ طَيِّبَةٍ فِي فِي جَنَّاتٍ أَدْنْ ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمِ وَأُخَرَى تُحِبُّونَهَا نَصْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَتْحٌ قَرِيبٌ وَبَشِرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Which one of us we don't want? Mercy from Allah, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jannah! How many of us we don't want it? We all want it! Therefore I say to you as Muslims, clean your hearts against any other Muslim. Clean it out. Settle your differences. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, and the brother, He mentioned this, He said, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى فَاصْلِهُ بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Verily, the relationship between the Muslims between the believers is brotherhood. A Muslim is the brother of a Muslim. He doesn't lie to him. He doesn't oppress him. He doesn't deceive him. He doesn't leave him to be oppressed or deceived by somebody else. And in that, that long hadith, the Prophet said, At-taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is where? It's in the heart. A believer is to another believer, Kalbunyan. Yashidduhu ba'duhu ba'da. The believer is to another Muslim, another believer, like the, like the bricks of a building. They come together like this. Not like that. He said the believer is to another believer, like the parts of a body. So if any part of the body is hurting, sick, with fever, it hurts, it sends that pain to the rest of the body, and the rest of that body stays awake until the healing process completes itself. So all believers have to feel for the other believers. Subhanallah. When I heard the day I came here, that after Jum'ah, 
a Muslim shot a Muslim down the street or up the street or whatever happened. Wallahu alam. Is that what happened here? Tell me this was not an act of jahiliyyah. Tell me this is an action of Islam. Tell me it's an act that we can be proud of. Tell me this is something we can stand on Yawm al Qiyamah and say, I did it. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. The person who did that, I don't care what the justification was. This is the same act of jahiliyyah which the Prophet ﷺ found the practice among the Muslims of Mecca. The same jahiliyyah he found among the Aus and Khazraj, the people of Medina. The same jahiliyyah before Islam came. But the medicine of the Qur'an was good enough for those people, and it made them into the best of people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about them what? Waltakun? No, I'm sorry. Kuntum khaira. Ummatin. Ukhrijat linnas. Ta'maroon bil ma'roof. Wa tanhawna an al-munkar. Wa tu'minoon billah. Same people. Just like you people. You Muslims, we Muslims, we are the best, we are the cream of the crop for the whole deen, for the whole world. But we got to act like it. It's like a doctor. He got all the medicine, but he doesn't use it himself. It's like a man. He got a whole shop full of clothes, but he using some drugs and he come out in the morning naked. It's like a man, he has a shop, he owns a supermarket, but he starves his whole family to death. This is the kind of Muslims that some of us have become. We have the Qur'an, we have the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. We have all the tools to bring back the glory of Islam, the Ird of Islam, the Izzah of Islam. You are here right now. The deen is with us. We can change this country. We can change this city. We can have whatever we want, just close our hands on it. We don't have to lift a stone, we don't have to lift a gun, we don't have to lift and stab nobody. We don't have to shout, we don't have to sneak, we don't have to act terroristic, we don't have to do anything. Just behave well. The Prophet ﷺ said, I have been sent with good manners. Subhanallah. It's the good manners of the, of the Muslim that will win. The neighbors, the good manner of the Muslim will win your colleagues. The good manner of the Muslim will win your co-workers. It's your good manners that will win the people that you meet. Not your talking, not your roughness, not your gangsterism, not your guns, not your money, not your houses or your cars. They're not going to win anything. Matter of fact, you will lose. That brother who got shot, we don't know his condition, but he's in the grave right now. Whatever he had, who got it now? And the one who shot him, what he got? He got some money for it? If he did, if he's riding around, he's a tough man, what he got? 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, he also going to be in the ground. He's going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever he is, he needs to make tawbah. Tawbah. Muslims, you and I need to make tawbah and come back to this deen and give this deen the light, the power, the respect, and the dignity which it needs. Then, you're going to find out, Allah will put this part of the earth in your hands. Allah will put the earth wherever the Muslims are in their hands. We don't know how it will come back into our hands. We don't say how it will. But it will. It must. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ بِالْحُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقَّ لِيُذْهِرَهُ عَلَى الدِّينِ كُلِّ وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Another place, وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ And another place, وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْمُنَافِكُونَ Even though the kafirs, the mushriks, and the munafiks don't like it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the huda. What is the huda? The Quran and the Sunnah. What deen al haq al Islam. The yudh hirahu in order to make it dominant over kudli deen, over every system of life. Walaul kari al kafirun. How many of us believe that? If we believe it, we got to act like it. 
It ain't enough for you to talk this, Dean. You got to talk it. You got to walk it. You got to live it. The old and the young. You got to talk and walk and live this, Dean, when you're dealing with money. You got to talk, walk, and live this, Dean, if you're dealing with women and men. You got to talk, walk, and live this, Dean, inside your homes, how you're dealing inside. You got to talk, walk, and live this, Dean, on the college campus. You got to talk and walk, live this, Dean, in your neighborhood, in your hearts. Otherwise, Allah, who is the one who knows what is inside our hearts and our homes, on the day of judgment, when a man comes before Allah and he's asked what he used to do, or Allah used to worship you, Allah will say, you are a liar. You used to do what you did to show the people. We don't want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to embarrass us on the day of judgment. We don't want Allah to condemn us on the day of judgment. We want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us our book in our right hands. And we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to go over the sirat quickly. And we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us his maghfirah, his, we want Allah to give us his forgiveness and his mercy. And we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the Jannah which he promised. We want to be with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Salihin and the Qanitin and the Shahideen. We want to be with them. But if we want to be that way, we have to live this deen. Walk this deen, talk this deen, make the sacrifices for this deen. And we have to do it now. O Muslim brothers and sisters. The root of ignorance has its own descriptions. And what is it? Hatred. These are the different signs. If you want to know the root of ignorance, it has specific signs and traits. One of it is hatred. When you find among Muslims, hatred. They don't want to look at each other. They don't want to touch each other. They don't want to be in the same room with each other. They are plotting and scheming how to take the blood of each other, kill each other. This is hatred. This is the worst of jahiliyyah. Another sign of it is jealousy. Hasad. We want what another Muslim has. We see a brother with a wife, we want his wife. Sister see her sister, she got a nice husband. She want to undermine that sister. Or, if the brother take another wife. She don't want the brother to have another wife. She don't want the other sister to have a husband, even though there's only one man available for every seven or eight women. I said there's only one man available. Because the other males, they either locked up, knocked up, messed up, drugged up, homosexuals, playboys, irresponsible. They don't have no job, don't want to get no job. So you already got there, that's eight. And the women is already, I don't have to tell you brothers, the women is already outnumbered the men just in the births. And the other thing is that men die before women do. So it's almost nine or ten available women who need to be married for every man. I mean a responsible, sane, able-bodied, able-minded, halal, pure man. Responsible, as Allah described them, الرِّجَالُ كَوَامُونَ عَلَى النِّسَاءِ So now, if our sisters, they don't want the brother to marry another sister, because they jealous, which is natural. SubhanAllah, what they leave the other sisters to do? What they going to do? The root of ignorance, criminal behavior. Brothers and sisters, let me be clear with you. Most of our daughters, alhamdulillah, we keep them pretty close in the home until they go out to them schools. We don't know what happens in that school. And you brothers and sisters, you know that it don't, it don't take long for little Fatima to lose what you think she's supposed to have. Don't take long, not in those public schools, in them little closets and hallways and stairways, 
So if your daughter is going to a public school, when she gets to be 13, you don't know what's going on, really. You can't guarantee me nothing. Not if she's going to a public school. But let's talk about the young men. Seven out of ten of our young men are in the streets five, six, seven hours a day. Is it right or wrong? So what's in the street? What is in the street? Kaffirs. Music. They go on to the, what do they call them? Internet cafes. Got nice names. Internet cafe. What they doing in the internet cafe? You brothers know what they're doing. Eight out of ten people is going to the internet cafe is going there not to drink coffee and not to get on the internet to get some education. They're going to look at pornography. And even if they're not going to look at pornography, they can't help but see it because 60% of all the emails that come to me, and I'm not asking for it, 60% of the emails that come to me is pornography. So if you let your sons and daughters use the computer without supervision, you can, be, you can believe with no doubt they have been penetrated. Criminal behavior. Your brothers, your sons, they're walking around with knives and guns. Who are they going to shoot? They ain't going to cross town to shoot no Kaffirs. They're going to shoot another Muslim. Or they're going to rob somebody so they can get them a stack of money that ain't even worth nothing. Or they can get some drugs to buy that car, them rims, or whatever it is. My neighborhood is no different. SubhanAllah, I never thought to myself that I would come to a Muslim neighborhood and it would be almost just like Brooklyn and Harlem. Isn't that what it has become? I came from a Jahiliya that some of you brothers and sisters would not imagine. And I don't even want to confess. But I never would think that young Muslims in the year 2004 have become just like what I came out of. And their fathers and mothers as Muslims for the last 500 years. Young Muslim hoodlums, young Muslim criminals, young Muslim prostitutes, young Muslim drug dealers, young Muslim killers. They want to kill a rock. They don't care what they kill. And these is the sons and daughters of sheikhs. People who fear Allah, who's here for the Fajr and here for the Isha Salah, sons and daughters. Why? Because we're not taking care of them. What's another one of the signs of this root of ignorance? Rebellion. You order them to pray. They say, I, ain't, I don't feel like praying. Don't tell me what to do. They disobey Allah. They disobey the Prophet because they got no fear of Allah. They got no fear of the Prophet. No love for the Prophet What you think? They, they'll shoot you. They'll shoot their father. If you keep on telling, bothering them. And if the mother tells them they can't go out the house and she blocked away, they'll wind up punching her. This is how much rebellion. And where do they learn it from? The television. The music. The hip-hop. The, the, what we call the monkey boys. The monkey boys. Singing and hopping around, holding their private parts and talking crazy. Wearing bling bling, the ropes of the fire. So our sons and daughters have become like monkeys, like apes, like swine in our faces. Rebellious towards Allah, rebellious towards the Prophet wasallam. And what kind of sons and daughters are they? They are the ones that Musa wasallam met with Khidr. And what did Khidr do to that young man? He killed him instantly. Because the inside of the earth was better for him than the outside. And that Allah would give his parents a better son in their place. Criminal behavior. Transgression. They want to rob people. They want to break into people's houses. They want to break into people's cars. They want to stop. They want to carjack people. They want to kill people. Even on Jumu'ah. Can you imagine that? How can a Muslim plan and plot to shoot a Muslim on Jumu'ah after Jumu'ah? Subhanallah. Muslims say subhanallah. 
vengeance. We call it vengeance. You curse me, I curse you. You slap me, I slap you. You shot at me, I shoot at you. Matter of fact, I'm coming through your neighborhood and shoot up the whole neighborhood. Well, how did, I mean, the neighborhood didn't do nothing to me. We shoot up the whole neighborhood. I shoot your mother and your grandmother. I shoot everybody up. These kinds of people, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come down upon them in one way or another. And young Muslims, I'm telling you, you have chance right now to make tawbah, to fear Allah, to change your lives, to come towards the Jannah, to come back to Islam. Don't wait till the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes on you and you are somewhere in a wheelchair. Or you somewhere in jail for 25 or 30 years. I've never been to the prisons here in, uh, in uh, Sydney. But I've been to the prisons in New York. And let me tell you about Rikers Island. You, how many people here ever heard of Rikers Island? It's a prison that has 156,000. Can you imagine that? 156,000? And there's cities in the world that ain't got 156,000. <laughs> criminals, a whole island of criminals. And they got one area for the young people who are like from 14 years old up to 17. And in that area alone, they got 23,000. And some of these young Muslims, some of these young criminals are Muslims. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, Rikers Island, the population of Muslims on Rikers Island is 21%. That's one out of every five is a Muslim. That makes about 30,000 Muslims on Rikers Island. This is in New York City. 30,000. And where they have the young people, 14 to 17, the same thing. About four or 5,000 of them, Muslims. And I sat down with some of these young Muslims one day in a circle to talk with them. And I said, listen, before we start out, let's count up the years. I just want to see how many years we got here. How much time you got? I asked the brother. He said, I got five years. How many time you got? He said, I got 15. I said, how many time you got? He said, I got triple life. Okay, that's like 60. How many times time you got? Yeah, they're talking like that. So there was about 47 of them sitting there because those were the only ones that was allowed to come out for Juma. And in that room, we counted up 512 years. For what? This one here killed, shot his mother. This one over here shot somebody else. This one over here robbed somebody else. This one over here got triple life because he got caught with a whole bundle of drugs. This one over here did this. This one over here did that. This one stabbed this one. This one shot that people. All of them. These are young people. How old are you? How old are you? See? Young Muslims. Young Muslims. And some of those young boys in the room, some of them just look like, just like them. They're never coming out of the prison anymore. Little young animals. Now, I don't know about Sydney now. How many Muslims in the pr prisons in Sydney? Sheikh Shadi, he knows. See? It's a shame, brothers. And what I understand is that the prison population, the population of Muslims in the prisons is growing. That means the ratio of prisoners in the, in the jails in Sydney, the ratio of Muslims and Kafirs, the ratio of Muslims is growing. That means more and more Muslims is going to jail than Kafirs. Brothers and sisters, you young men, we cannot hold you back from the fire. We cannot hold you back from kufr, if that's what you want to do. But I don't believe that's what you want to do. You just don't, not following the guidance. I'm inviting you as a Muslim brother coming from the Jahiliyyah. I've been steeped. I understand. I can still smell the root of ignorance from my life. From my life. And I'm warning you and I'm inviting you to come out of the root of this Jahiliyyah into the fruit of Islam. 
Stay away from the tribalism, the racism, even that you find among your fathers. Because some of the fathers, they have contributed to some of the racism that you find among the young Muslims. It starts with the fathers and the grandfathers. Arabs don't like Pakistanis. Pakistanis and Indians, they don't like Arabs. The South Africans don't like the West Africans. I mean, they're all Africans. It's crazy. They're all Africans, but they don't like each other because they're from the east or the west side. The white Arabs don't like the black Arabs. This one and that one. And they're all the same. They're all Bani Adam. All of them Turab. All of them Nutfa. All of them headed towards al hakumu takathur hatta zurtumul maqabir O Muslims, kill this racism inside of you before this racism kills you. Kill the loyalty of blood. Kill it. There's no sanctity in blood. Kill the allegiance to everything else except the allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. O Muslims, the older Muslims, teach your sons and daughters the principle of wala. Teach them what is wala. That we have loyalty, we have honor, we have allegiance for every Muslim. We don't care if he's a sinner or not. We have allegiance. We're not with their sins. Not with their corruption, not with their deviance, but what we have wala with. We have wala with their belief. We don't speak ill about no Muslim. We don't allow the kafir to come to us and put a microphone in our face and say nothing bad about no Muslim. Ever. We speak what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, let him who believes in Allah in the last day do what? Say what's good or keep quiet. Don't let them say, what you think about so and so? What you think about this Muslim? Are you with this Muslim or that Muslim? We say we with all the Muslims. We with every Muslim everywhere. That's our brother. Now if he did something wrong, I'm not with him in that wrong he did. But that's my Muslim brother, wherever they are. The black, the white, the tall, the short, the Afghani, the Indian, the Pakistani, the African, the Saudi, the Lebanese. All of them are my Muslim brothers, wherever they are, and sisters. And we have wala with them wherever they are. That's our statement. And we have bara against all the kuffar. No, we don't hate every kafir. We don't want to fight every kafir. We don't want to kill all the kafirs. That's not our belief. But we have bara. Bara mean bara against their values. Bara against their beliefs, rejection of their beliefs, rejection of their values, rejection of their kufr, rejection of their corruption, rejection of their rebellion, rejection of their rejection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is our belief. What is the fruit of Islam? It is just the opposite. Faslihu bayna akhawaykum. Make reconciliation. Sit the brothers down. Make a deal. Straighten it out. Bring it to the table. Bring it to the imam. Bring it to the judge. Bring it to the families. Bring it to the elders. Let's settle it. Let's move it out the way. Let's pay the money. Whatever we got to do. Or let's give it up for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's even better. Let's forgive the brother. Let's stop it. Let's stop it right here. How many Muslims want to reconcile their affairs with the other Muslims? We have to make prayer tonight. Make Qiyam al layl Make Tahajjid. Make Tawbah tonight. And take the Ghillah out of your hearts for another Muslim. And if you think that another Muslim owe you something or did something wrong, 
Go to the family, let the elders of the family, let's get it together, let's straighten it out. If you belong to this community right here, bring, let Sheikh Shadi, let him collect who got to be collected together, let's straighten it out. Because we can't have this. This is a shame. This is a shame against Islam. Gradually, tell another Muslim who you see is a criminal. Tell him, Akhi, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come to the masjid, inshallah, Akhi. Let's try to straighten things out, inshallah. We love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but Akhi, we don't like this what you're doing. But we love you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell a brother that. And mean it. And one day, inshallah, that brother is going to put down He's going to put that gun down. He's going to put them drugs down. He's going to settle them situations. And inshallah, you're going to see them come to the masjid. He's going to fear Allah. He's going to read Quran. And inshallah, he's going to become Qanitin, inshallah. We have to have concern and respect for each other. That's the fruit of Islam. Concern. Whoever doesn't have any concern for his Muslim brother, why should Allah have any concern for them? One of the hadiths of the hadith of Qudasi which the Prophet ﷺ gave to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to his servant on the day of judgment, he said, I was in the earth and I asked you for drink and you didn't give me the drink. And I was in the earth and I asked you for food and you didn't give me the food. And the person said, oh Allah, but you don't eat and drink. But he said, but I, but my, I sent my servant to you. I sent my servant to you. So a Muslim that's in need, we feed him, we help him, we support him. We find out what he needs. The Prophet ﷺ said, a Muslim is the mirror of another Muslim. How could I look in a Muslim face and not see what I need? How could my brother not know what I need? Not if he's my brother. We say to him, Kefahaluka akhi. Or if you say kifik. What you mean by that? What is your condition? How do you feel? What you need? How's your family? How's your health? How's your heart? How's your deen? What you need? Can I help you, my brother? That's what we should tell every brother when we meet him. Before you leave a brother, say, Akhi, what you need? Can I help you with anything, Akhi? Brothers say that to each other, they're going to straighten things out, inshallah. Have taqwa. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be obedient to Allah. Have taqwa. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna akramakum, inda Allah atqaakum. The best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is those that have the most what? Fear of Allah. Taqwa. Have bir. And dignity. What is bir? Bir. Goodness. Goodness. Allah consciousness, wanting to do good, having ikhlas, having love. When you meet a Muslim who has bir, he has light in his face. He has truth on his tongue. He has taqwa, he has tawakkal, he has hayya in his heart. You see, he's humble. He might be rigid, he might be firm, but in his heart towards a believer. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? The believers are those who are what towards the kuffar? Ashidda wa al kuffari? Wa ruhama? Bainahum. Hearing and obeying. This is the fruit of Islam. To hear and to obey. Not just to listen, but to hear. How many of us listen to the Quran every day? We all listen to the Quran every day, but we don't hear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, Afala yatadabbarun al Quran. Don't you reflect on the Quran? Had it been from someone other than Allah, you would have found in it much inconsistency. You just listen, but you don't hear. Observing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man today, a woman today, they just want money. They don't care how the money comes. Everybody looking to get a free credit card. A fire card. Everybody wants a house with a mortgage. 
They don't care. As long as it's a nice house, they live in the house of fire. Everybody want to buy a car. They don't care where they get the car. As long as it's a nice car, they got a car of fire. They ride their family around in fire. They living in fire. They dealing with fire. They don't care. Because they're not observing the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu said, if you don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do whatever you wish. Do whatever you want to do. Allah don't care. The hellfire will be filled up. And when it's filled up, Allah will ask the hellfire, do you have any more room? The hellfire said, I got plenty of room. Oh Muslims, the fruit of Islam is the ability to relinquish debts. Debts of injury and blood. The highest Muslim is the one who was injured. But they say to the person that injured them, I forgive you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best Muslim is the one that someone owes them money, but they realize the brother is unable to pay them. And they say, Akhi, before we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I forgive you of that debt. Subhanallah. Forgive your brother of the debt that he took from you. Forgive the brother of the debt of what he did to you. Forgive the brother or sister of whatever debt it is before you meet Allah or that person meet Allah. Because on Yawm Al-Qiyamah, two people will meet. The hadith of the Prophet ﷺ is a very long one. He speaks about the gates of paradise is opened up on Mondays and Thursdays. So many people heard this hadith. It's opened up on Mondays and Thursdays. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will gather all the people together and allow them to enter the paradise according to their station. And then there will be two people, he'll say, Hatta yastaliha. Accept these two. Hold them up. Hatta yastaliha. Hold these two people up until what? Until they reconcile their affairs. Don't meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on day of judgment and wait for Him to reconcile it. Reconcile the matters between yourselves now. O Muslims, have iman. Make a covenant with Allah and have wala for all the Muslims. Have loyalty for all Muslims. Don't let any kafir, don't let any kafir, any non-Muslim cause you to break your loyalty with your Muslims anywhere in the world. We are Muslims. We are upon the Qur'an, we are upon the Sunnah, we have a love of Allah, we have a love for His Messenger Wasallam. for all the Muslims everywhere that the sun shines. That's our deen. And we have bara, we have a rejection of the kuffar wherever they are, even in the form of animals. We don't care what they have and what kind of governments they have. We reject their values. Although, we are citizens. We do to obey the law. We are dignified people. We are not people that subvert. We are not people that circumvent. We are people that follow the law. And we respect people's properties and we respect the law. But that doesn't mean that we don't love the Muslims wherever they are. We don't have the Catholics telling us who to love. Muslims. We love only for Allah. We love and we hate only for Allah. And our oaths, we never say, Uqsum Billah. We don't say this without any need to do so. Our oaths are only for doing good. Our allegiance is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O Muslim brothers and sisters, the author of Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, he said, Khairul Kalam. The best speech is the one that is concise, but prolific, strong, powerful, with its meanings and its proofs. I have attempted, to the best of my ability, to show my concern, especially for the young Muslims, to give my warning to the young Muslims, to give my advice to the older Muslims, and to offer even the same advice for myself. Because you young Muslims that are sitting here, you are the same ages of my sons and daughters. And some of you, the age of some of my grandchildren. And I want to see the young Muslims to be strong for the future. We want to see the young Muslims. No one of us want to die 
and see our children in the street. So we cannot hand the Quran, we cannot hand the masjid, we can't hand the school, we cannot hand the society of the Muslims to them because they're out in the street. Instead of handling the Quran, they're handling drugs. Instead of being somewhere on some battlefield, giving their lives for Islam, they're killing each other in their own neighborhoods. So Muslims, we ask you to stand up for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask you to correct yourselves. How many Muslims here is below the age of 20? Let me see the hands. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You brothers... You brothers who are below the age of 20, you are the sacred treasure of Islam. And we, all the Muslims, we have to do what we can to serve you, to help you. But you got to want to help yourself. We can't force you to do anything you don't want to do. If you want to go to that fire, and you want to go to the street and to that kufr, to that facade and that fawahish, we cannot stop you. We can only block you. We can only advise you. We can only warn you. But if you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will listen. You will listen before it's too late.